Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's having a fantastic snow day so far. Today is Wednesday, December 16th, 2020. And this is Mr. Agnew here, here to bring you some math. So if you would look also on the Canvas page, you'll see a count to 100 exercise that you guys should try to do. And uh, once you're done with that, just try to keep on counting to 100 throughout your day. Keep in mind some of these five frames that we're going to be talking about and uh, enjoy your time off, guys. This is kind of nice, right? All right, so here we go. Five frames for math. Here we go. Now, remember, what we're paying attention to is the squares with the circles inside. Okay, we're going to be counting the circles inside mostly. But with a five frame, you also want to take into account the squares that don't have any circles, circles in them. And you'll know what I mean here in just a second. All right, here's the number one. So this five frame is indicating that there's one dot, right? But remember from some of our lessons last week, we talked about how to pay attention to how many squares do not have dots, okay? So this has one that is full. How many squares are empty? One, two, three, four are empty, meaning we have one and we need four more to get five. So your number sentence could read one plus four equals five. Okay, this five frame has two circles in it. Okay, two circles right there. You can see them, you can touch them, you can count them, but... The next level of thought that I want you guys to have is how many are empty. How many more circles do you need to fill up the entire five frame? The answer to that is one, two, three. The number of empty squares we have. Okay, so you could say one, two plus one, two, three more would give us five total frames. Okay, here's the number three. All right, you see three dots, one, two, three, and how many empty spaces? That's right, one, two. So your number sentence for this problem would read three plus two equals five total. Okay, this is the number four represented in a five frame, right? So you see four circles, four black dots, and one empty square. All right, so four of these frames are full. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one is empty. So to get to five, which is our magic number, you would see, or I'm sorry, your number sentence would say four, one, two, three, four, plus one would give you five. Okay, so now if you look, all the five frames are filled with these black dots. So they are all full. Okay, all right, let's see what you guys learned here. All right, so I'm going to show you how many five frames. I'm going to show you some dots, and you are going to guess how many are in the five frames. Ready? Let's try it. There you go. There's two. You saw it right away. All right. There's two full. And how many empty? Bonus question. Very good. There are three empty. All right. How many of these five frames are filled up? Four is correct. Very good. And bonus question. How many are empty? one all right so it would take one more to get to five so four plus one more would give us five <gasps> how much is this how many do you see one's the number very good very very good and how many are empty one two three four four are empty so you could say one plus four equals very good, right there. Okay. 
How many are in this frame? That is correct, my friends. There are five in it. There are five in it. You got it. The number five right up here. Feel free to reach out and trace it. Draw it in the sky. You can count five fingers on each hand. You can count five toes. You can count five pieces of paper sitting on your counter. Right? That's the name of the game. Math is all around us, right? How many here? <gasps> Three. I see one, two, three frames that are filled. And how many empty? Bonus, bonus. Very good. There's two empty, right? So three plus two would fill your five frame. All right. That was too easy for you guys. I know you rocked that. Now we're going to keep up with our uh, lessons on time, okay? We've been talking about time the past couple units, so here we go. We're going to learn how to tell time, what we tell time with, what time of the day you do certain things, and then uh, you guys will be wrapped up. Thanks again for watching. Here we go. <gasps> time. All right, in our book, we learned about different animals on the farm, right? The farmer is busy all day, all day, taking care of his or her animals. We are busy all day too, aren't we? Okay, and we're going to talk about numbers and telling time. All right, feel free if you would like to warm up. All right, and you can act like a horse and you can reach your arms up to the sky and down to the ground. Up to the sky and down to the ground. Let's count to ten. Ready? <gasps> One. Two, keep stretching up. Three, four, five, six, seven, almost there. Eight, nine, ten. Oh, whew. nice job. You guys reach your arms up real tall ten times. You're almost as tall as a horse. A horse, of course. All right, good warm up, guys. Nice work. All right, so. There are a couple things that we use in our lives to tell time, okay? This right here is a picture of a watch, okay? You can wear it on your wrist, which is just above your hand, okay? This is a clock, okay? You probably see clocks all over the place. This is an analog clock. Analog clock means it has hands, and it moves on its own, and when the hands are pointing in certain directions, that tells us what time it is, okay? We're practicing that. We're learning, all right? Clocks and watches help us know what time of day it is, okay? It might tell you, hey, it's time to take some medicine. It might tell you, hey, it's time to get to lunch. It might tell you, hey, we need to be at recess, okay? Things like that. Or it's time for bed, right? Clocks tell us all sorts of information. That's why it's very important to understand what a clock is telling us. Okay, here's some more pictures of watches, right? Have you seen some of these? You got a fancy Apple watch, all right? And you wear these watches on your wrist, okay? Here's another type of clock. This clock is a digital clock. Can you tell me digital? Good job. Digital clock. Okay, there's no hands, okay? There's nothing pointing anywhere. It's just the numbers that you read. Okay, this one says 10, 10. This one says 4 o'clock. This one says 7 o'clock. This one says 12.08. This one says 12.34 and 58 seconds. And p.m. means it's in the afternoon. Okay, we're going to talk more and more about that in the units to come. But we're just kind of planting the seed early, right? Okay, here's an analog clock. Analog clock. This is the clock that we were talking about that has hands that point to different numbers or different notches on here and they tell you what time of day it is okay if this was in the morning this clock right here it says 10 05 10 05 if it was 10 05 in the morning you would be doing reading if you were at school okay if it's 10 05 at nighttime you're hopefully asleep in bed all right Let's do another activity here. Okay. 
Digital's over here, analog's over here. What about this one? Where does this clock go? Digital with just numbers or analog with hands? It goes right over here. That's an analog clock. All right, what about a digital clock? Very good. There's a digital clock right there. You guys are getting the hang of it. Just numbers, no hands. And it's in a little rectangle and it's not a circle. Okay, here's another little rectangle that's a digital clock. Very good. Okay. A third digital clock, a digital rectangle, if you will. Very good. A circular analog clock. A circular analog clock again. Where's this one go? Where's he going to go? That's right. He's a digital guy. Say it. Digital. Nice. Last one. All right. This guy's kind of silly looking. Where are you going to put him? Digital? No, of course not. He's an analog guy. Very good. Very good. All right. Now let's talk about what we do during the day. So we do some activities in the morning and some activities are at night, okay? Let's work together and review and sort what things we do in the morning and things we do at night, okay? In the morning, the sun's coming up. Mom and dad might be drinking coffee, okay? Mornings on a farm usually mean waking up the animals, getting them something to eat, making sure they have something to drink, maybe get a little exercise, okay? But then after a long day, the sun starts to go down and this pops up. What is this? That's not the sun anymore. That is the moon. Very good. The moon's coming up. All right. Nighttime activities on the farm. Well, not very exciting. All right. The animals are probably sleeping like this person here, okay? All tucked in, resting up for tomorrow's activities, okay? So, in the morning, what does the morning activities look like? Like this little guy's out for a stroll, getting some exercise. All right, the farmer's hard at work. What else? The horses are eating their breakfast, okay? The cow is feeding its son or daughter some breakfast. All right, this farmer's working hard, getting some plants ready. And then the nighttime activities really are just kind of sleeping, right? Real pretty sky over here, dark purple. All right, maybe one last little nighttime stroll for the sheep. All right, guys, morning and night. Morning and night on a farm. Okay, we're going to continue to talk about addition. We're going to continue to talk about numbers. We're going to continue to work on counting and what kind of clocks to use, telling time, things like that. Okay, so I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Thank you for jumping on and checking out our videos. We miss you a ton. We hope we get back in person tomorrow. And... Stay safe out there. Thanks, guys.